Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lofredo, and this, I believe, may be the last video in the Perfecting Page Layout series of videos, but you never know. Uh, today, we are talking about blank pages. Now, blank pages, uh, inserting them, is relatively simple in Finale, but as with some things in Finale, uh, there's a little bit more than meets the eye sometimes, so we'll kind of walk through everything here. First of all, in order to add a blank page, we need to be in the Page Layout tool, and we need to go to the Page Layout menu, and there's an op two options here, Insert and Delete Blank Pages. Now, these options only exist in this menu. There's no way to right-click anything to get a uh, contextual menu. It doesn't exist in this contextual menu here, so this is actually the only place to do this. Uh, so insert blank pages and we get this simple little box here that will ask us how many blank pages we want to insert and we can put as many as we need. Um, it will ask you where you want to put them and you can put them in the current part or score that you're viewing, selected parts, and of course you can choose which ones you want to uh, add them for or you could choose all the parts or all the port parts and score together. So very similar to some of the other options in the page layout tool. And then it will ask you where you want to put them, either before page one, or you could change this before two, whatever, you can fill this out however you need, um, after page whatever, or um, uh, you can put a blank page at the end of the document here as well. So just for now, let's say we're gonna add one blank page to the current part or score after page one, and we're gonna click okay. And really that's all there is to it. You get a blank page and voila, we're done, sort of. There's a couple things to take note of. First of all, you may notice that uh, it's not completely blank. It actually has uh, text blocks on it, which is sort of handy. Most of the time, I think this is what you want to do. Um, the reason that these still appear is because if you go into the edit frame attributes for these text blocks, you'll see that these particular text blocks are um, text blocks that get attached to a certain page through the end of the file, and we define that by saying it attaches to the page, the page range, and then two through the end. So no matter where you put these blank uh, pages, this uh, basically the range of this text block is going to encompass those blank pages, which is why um, this will these uh, text blocks will always appear. In fact, we can put this blank page anywhere, including at the end of the document, and that will still appear. So actually, let's do another one here at end of document, and you will still get those uh, text blocks. Now, if you didn't want these text blocks, you could do something like, you know, change how the, uh, what the last page is here. Uh, so if we think if we did this page 12, it wouldn't appear on the last page there. So there's a few options of, of being able to do that. The, um, the only thing that is a little bit weird about this is that um, when you add a blank page before the first page, I'm just going to show you what happens, insert blank page before page one, um, you will not get any text blocks, which is, uh, you know, this, if this is what you need to do, that's great. If not, uh, you're going to need to do a few other things. A lot of times when we do these blank first pages for page turns, what we'll do is we want the titling to also appear on the blank page. We'll also put a VS text here in the middle of the, the first page or, you know, turn for page turns or whatever. So uh, we do have to deal with this, and the way that we deal with this is to go into these text blocks and go to the Edit Frame Attributes. And you notice that these text blocks are slightly different because these are attached to single pages most of the time, these title texts. Um, so what we want to do is actually convert this to a different type of attachment so it's not a single page, it's actually a page range. And in this case, actually I should show you, See, you can see that now it's attached to page two. Without that blank page there, this is actually attached to uh, page one. But with that blank page, um, those text blocks kind of move over with the page itself. So that's what's going on there. So that's why now it says uh, attached to page two. But to fix this, all we really need to do is go to page range now and make sure that it's attached to page one through page two. So now we get two instances of this text block, once on the blank page and once on the first page of music. That's how you have to deal with that. Unfortunately, we have to do this individually for each text block that appears on the first page like this. So uh, bear with me, I'm just gonna do this here uh, for these other ones and I may uh, fast forward this a second. So just give me a minute. 
Unfortunately, you can't do this all at once. It would kind of be nice if we could just lasso select that and choose edit frame attributes, but uh, whenever you do that, it will pull up the frame attributes for that particular uh, text block that you right clicked. Um, and then in some circumstances, some of the text blocks like the ones I have here, uh, these were added as being page range two through the end or originally one through the end. So these you just have to change um, the starting page here to be page one instead of page two. And that will fix both of these things just like that. And so now you have this uh, basically title page or VS page, depending on how you're going to use this, with the same text blocks and everything. And uh, we'll put a VS here, uh, all that stuff. I'm going to talk more about the text tool. I think it's going to be the next uh, category of videos. So uh, more about this later. But this is how you would fix this uh, blank page. What's also interesting about doing this, uh, if we go to like a, a linked part and we check out what's happening with the edit frame attributes for this um, text block, now because there's no blank page here, this text block is still only appearing on one page, but you can see that the frame attributes now says page range zero through one, which is strange because there is no page zero, but this is how Finale is defining this. What this means though is that um, this is nice because now if you insert a blank page on a different layout in the violin part here before page one, we'll also get these, um, uh, these uh, text blocks on the blank page, which is really nice. However, just to cover all of my bases, I'm gonna delete this blank page. I'm gonna show you this window in a second um, on the part, but I'm also gonna delete this first blank page on the, um, uh, on the score as well. Unfortunately, what happens when you delete both blank pages is that if you start adding the blank page back to the, to the beginning, the text box go away. So it's sort of resetting that function for you, or rather kind of undoing that behavior where these text blocks are appearing on page zero to one. Um, so that's, that's just one thing to be aware of. And it's actually why in my personal templates, I prefer to have these uh, blank first page is actually in the template already so I don't have to go through every time I need it and you know change the frame attributes for all of these text blocks on the first page they're already there it's always much easier to delete a blank page if I don't need it than it is to add one if if you need it later you know what I mean but uh, since I was just there let's take a look at that delete blank pages window which is fairly simple again you have the choice of where to delete them you can choose current part or score selected all parts or all parts and score just like the other window um, and in in this window you can choose a range to delete from so if I choose just from page one through page one I'm only deleting the blank page on page one however I can choose to delete you know from page one through page three and that will delete both of those uh, blank pages which were on either side of this first page of music. Or you can choose, as you saw here, to, to delete page X through the end of the piece. So if I choose, you know, let's say page three through the end of the piece, um, you can see that all of those other blank pages that I had uh, created go away, except for that first one. Uh, so that's what's going on with that delete blank pages window. Fairly simple, but that's exactly how you use it. The last thing I want to talk about is um, something having to do with the page margins. If you are using facing page margins that are different on the left and right. So let me just show you what my page format for the score looks like. You can see that I have facing page margins checked and my left margin is different than my left margin. My right margin is different than my right margin. Uh, this is how you'd set it up if you wanted to leave a little extra room for hole punches or something like that. Um, this allows this, the center of the binding to have a little bit more space. However, when you add a blank page, Finale doesn't calculate those pages going forward. And as you can see, I, don't, I hope you can see this, the, the margin here on the left side is large as if this was a right page. But as you can see from the layout, this is now a left page. And the same thing with page three here, this is now um, as if it were a left page, but it's actually a right page. So the smaller margin is now on the inside, which is absolutely incorrect. It's sort of, it's sort of backwards and you can go all the way down the score and it's backwards on all of the pages. The reason for that is that you've added a blank page, but be technically speaking, because when the pages are generated, they initially consult the page format settings, which imbues those pages with that left and right margin. Once those pages have those left and right margins, they don't ever get undone unless you undo it manually. So when you add that blank page, you're essentially sending a right page into the left page position and Finale doesn't recalculate that for you. So 
how do you fix this? Well, there's a couple of ways. You can, if you want, go into the redefine pages. And as we know, if we choose all pages for current part and score, or left pages or right pages if you want, um, this will reset everything back to the settings in the page format. The problem with that, particularly if you already, if your piece is already done and you have, um, you know, special local adjustments to systems and everything, the problem with that it will, is it will also reset everything else, including the system margins and more importantly the distance between system values will all get uh, reset to this value right here, um, which would sort of destroy all of your uh, all of the work that you've done. So that's not the most ideal way to do it. But uh, there's sort of a, a nifty little um, uh, trick to this that I've, that I've found. So we know that if we right click any of these margins, we have this option to remove manual adjustments. And when you do this, what you're doing is removing the manual adjustment just for this margin on just this page, and it's resetting it back to the way it's set in the page format window, which is what we want. So we just choose that, and you can see that now that margin gets small, and I can do it here, remove manual adjustments, I can do it here so that I'm doing it on these four margins for both a left page and right page. And now you can see all at once my, um, my first and second page of music is, is laid out correctly with the larger margin on the inside. That does not, however, fix the margins going forward because resetting uh, the manual position only applies to that particular margin that you've just done that on. So there's one further trick which I think is kind of neat. What you want to do is make sure that you have adjust left or right pages selected, right? Uh, you can do that over here as well with page margins. Just make sure that left or right pages is selected. Now what you can do is select that margin right there and when you press the right arrow it will reset all of the margins on the left page to that value and then press the left arrow again just to reset it back to where it should be and you can do this for all four margins right left right left or left right if you want doesn't matter left right and what this does because you're adjusting all the left and right pages at once for these four margins now you've reset all of those um, uh, facing paging facing pages margins correctly. So now you can see that there's uh, the large margin on the inside here, a smaller margin on the outside, large margin inside, and it will uh, be fixed for the entire document. So you would have to do that for all of the pages that follow a blank page, unless of course you happen to put two blank pages in there and then you obviously wouldn't have to worry about that because it would it would flip twice which would cancel it out so um, that's a little neat little fix about the uh, facing pages issues with blank pages all right so I think that's it that's uh, blank pages and finale there's not a whole lot to it but uh, I just showed you everything you could possibly need to know about it I believe so there you go so um, once again thanks for watching this has been perfecting page layout I believe this will be the last video in the perfecting page layout series but you never know um, so I will uh, look forward to seeing you on the next series. All right, once again, uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you soon on the next video.